again. Towards the end of March, we'll have another forum run by the steering committee that will present um, the aspects that we've taken from all the different committees and formulated into a draft strategic plan. The hope is uh, we'll get feedback there and then we'll use the month of April to tweak, revise, take new inputs, that kind of stuff. And hopefully um, sometime over the summer, the Board of Regents will have a strategic plan that they can deal with. So, um, and just as a reminder, we don't deal with budgets. So don't ask us about the budget over the next 18 months. That's not us. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce Dr. Rob Hale as one of the co-chairs of the AIE committee and he will um, start us off. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Bruce. So I'm Rob Hale. I'm the head of the English department also and I'm co-captain of Team Academic Innovation and Excellence with Harold Little. There's Harold right there. Um, it's been great working with Harold and with our team. You can see everybody's name up there. Can you hear me okay? I feel like I'm, you can hear me okay? Um, so I thought I'd start out and tell you the vision. One of the things we were asked to do was to kind of come up with a vision for our group. And I'll just sort of read what we came up with. And then I'll try to skate through these slides pretty quickly and, you know, try to have time for a couple of questions uh, right out of the gate. And then we'll have time for more questions later. So our vision is to engage every student and excite them to learn, benchmarking against standards for, for providing quality and learning with greater relevance to our world and external constituents. WKU will become a leader in innovative pedagogy and other institutions will follow our lead. We will aspire to be the best teachers in the Commonwealth and set standards for excellence in teaching diverse student populations. WKU will become students' academic first choice. So that's pretty ambitious. Uh, we were asked to be ambitious and, and we were. So uh, one of the other things we did early on was to do a, a SOAR analysis, which is kind of like a SWOTS analysis. So we look at strengths, opportunities, aspirations, results. If you want to read more about that, uh, you can go to the uh, uh, website. But I did want to highlight our two main goals here. Uh, number one, create an academically innovative environment that encourages excellence in faculty teaching and student learning. And then our second goal is more systems oriented, enhance and create institutional programs, curricula and systems to facilitate, facilitate teaching and improve learning. So you can see teaching and learning are at the center of this, uh, our, our endeavor. And then we have seven, uh, seven objectives for each of these goals. Uh, I'm not going to read these out loud to you. I'm going to let you read them. And then goal number two, enhance and create institutional programs, curriculum, and systems. So that's what we got. Um, and those are, you know, like with all strategic plans, it's pretty broad at this point. We've, we've identified some strategies that we think will help us accomplish these different objectives. Um, but the overall goal, again, is to improve learning. Um, Harold and I had a debate about this the other day. Is teaching or learning more important? And I, I argued for learning. Um, and so, uh, but that's, that's what we're going for, improving student learning, I think. Um, and we think these strategies will, or these objectives and strategies will help us, help us do that. So I think, you know, I can answer questions at this point. Yeah, hey. Yeah, if you could come to the mic when you have a question, that's just so we can do it for the people who aren't here. <laughs> I didn't want to confuse you by giving you instructions too early because then you just raise your hand and ask again. So, uh, Addie Cheney, International Programs. 
Uh, I was curious, are you guys at this point where you're starting to set measurable objectives? Has that, that been part of the conversation and trying, because it looks like some of them may be with, with exploring alternatives, kind of ask the question about how would you measure that? Is that just sort of a completion objective as opposed to something you'd be tracking over the long term? Yeah, no, we're starting to set metrics and um, Harold's been working on that part actually. And part of the metrics involve sort of accomplishing, you know, sort of like test results kind of things. And some of them are a certain number of programs will have had conversations about this or that to achieve this. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question or not, but, but we're, we're sort of, I mean, one of the things we're trying to do at this point is part of the system is to sort of get everybody's general response to what we're doing. And then once we have that after today, we're gonna to start plugging in more of the metric stuff. And is that something you guys have received a fair bit of uh, feedback from the rest of campus or has that been somewhat limited? We've pretty much uh, relied on the group and what the group is sort of representing the campus. Uh, we haven't done any big surveys or anything like that. Well, I know that the website makes it um, open and available for people to submit their in input. And this is maybe a question that I don't know Bruce and Paul would answer, but how much input or I know early on was input now with with things being available with progress being made how much feedback have you all received yeah so the these have just gone up um, I haven't checked the website today so the email but we've had um, probably a couple hundred emails from a variety of parties that range anywhere from don't raise tuition to four pages of text so um, it's highly variable as to the degree of depth that people have put in but um, we have looked at all of those um but not to these yet because these just came up so i haven't i haven't looked for any feedback in this yet anybody else for rob okay again we'll have time later for more questions so thank you I'll let our dynamic do introduce themselves because they keep changing their names. I don't know. They do. Hi, everybody. I'm Suzanne DeVries. I'm the co-chair along with Christian Ryan for Budget Efficiency and Infrastructure Working Group. Um, when we looked at our title, we really thought this was quite comprehensive because budget affects every aspect of the institution as well as efficiency and infrastructure. And um, as people have already mentioned that we are not the budget council, we do not set the budget model moving forward. So we just, we looked at budget as more fiscal stewardship. And then the other thing when we're looking at infrastructure, it is quite comprehensive because we're, we were um, thinking about physical spaces and systems, organizational structures and informational technology as well. So our group really runs the gamut, so to speak. Um, we found that our guiding principles or our overarching vision that permeates everything that we've done so far, um, and then I'll let you uh, read off the uh, slides, but anything that you see after this, this was our bedrock or our foundation from which we sprung from. Um, then we, we further subdivided that into people, places or spaces, programs, and services. And um, I'll just go quickly. People, uh, our overarching goal is to create a workforce that carries out the institutional mission, values, diversity, operates efficiently, and experiences high job satisfaction. Underneath that, you'll see objectives and strategies for that. And keep in mind, this is still a work in progress. Looking at spaces or the places, prioritize resources to support spaces that stimulate learning, inspire innovation, model sustainability, and promote community. So again, we'll let you go through our uh, PowerPoint to look at the working um, targets we have for each of that. 
And then looking at programs, increase retention through the development of dynamic programs that foster a holistic learning environment, build internal and external partnerships, prepare students for lifelong citizenship, and cultivate a sense of belonging. And then the last thing we looked at was services. This is still, we're working through this. Um, so deliver services that ensure safety and security, enrich health and well-being, model innovation and efficiency, and advance student success. So when we talk about all these, um, we, we think about not only the students, not the faculty, this, uh, but and the staff, everybody comprehensively here at this institution. Um, so when we talk about people, we talk uh, and we talk about employment, just so you know, um, we talk about everyone who's employed, employed here on campus. Um, and then, uh, like I said, uh, all the subgroups, it just infuse our guiding principles into each of the four subgroups that we further subdivided. So that's the brief intro, and I'd just like to open it up for questions. We were told to keep it to five minutes. So. Which is clearly not enough time. We obviously have um, more goals and, and objectives than um, the previous and the other working groups, um, but we figure that you can go and take a closer look at those at, at your convenience. Okay, if, if that's all at this point, I'm gonna um, pass it on to the next group then. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, here we go. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, hello, I'm Molly Kirby. I'm in diversity and community studies, and I'm a co-chair with Dr. Lynn Holland in student affairs and is our chief diversity officer. Um, we're in charge of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we, we did a SOAR analysis just like the rest of the groups. We um, Worked actually a lot on some of our strategies as we went around, uh, went along, and realized that that probably what we do, just like everyone else said, is sort of one of those things that needs to be plugged into every other committee on campus. Also, another thing that we looked at were the definitions um, and some of the things that guide us, because diversity, equity, and inclusion all mean something different. Uh, so we kind of did our strategic plan around what those things would look like. So we came up with um, a mission and a vision. That was one of the first things we did. Is that on there? It is. Uh, okay, yeah, so you're looking at that right now. We came up with some, but basically emerging theme is what I was talking about, is that we kind of are implanted in everything else on campus. Uh, we did come up with a vision statement and a mission statement. And then we kind of broke everything into goals. So we basically have our first goal that deals with diversity. Our second goal deals with equity. And our third goal deals with inclusion on our campus. Talk about so those? real quickly, goal one is to increase diversity across all sectors of the WKU campus community. And this meaning that DEI principles and guidelines govern everything that we do, every working group, everything that we do here at the at the institution. The second piece with equity is about achieving a state so that all members of the campus community, and I underscore all members of the campus community, are free to learn and work with a relative, with a degree of, of harmony and, and uh, peace in order for them to do their jobs. And then an inclusive campus environment where all individuals feel a sense of belonging. In other words, we want folks to begin to love this institution. And I underscore that. So with that, we were able to increase it with those, those um, goals to create a, several objectives, intentionally support the recruitment and retention of diverse faculty and staff at WKU. And we have begun to identify some targets for, for that as well. Mm -hmm. I don't have my glasses. Oh, sorry. 
It's bad when you walk, leave your office, and you leave your glasses. You want mine? Intentionally support recruitment and retention of diverse students at WKU. Again, targets there. We've begun to identify. And going back to my comment earlier that all aspects of the institution will have an emphasis on diversity, equity, inclusion, looking at the quality enhancement plan here, even our American democracy projects, those things that have become part and parcel of who we are as an institution. All right, Molly. Didn't do it either. Sorry. It's got a delay. <laughs> yeah, it does. So under equity, objective one, a common understanding of conscious and unconscious bias at WKU, additional targets there. We want to decrease incidences of conscious and unconscious bias in all aspects of university life. You see that 75% in five years, 100% in 10 years. We are very ambitious. Equity, objective two, <laughs> create an equitable and safe campus environment. This is critical. No matter what we do at the institution relative to hiring, recruitment, if the environment is such that folks feel as if they are not safe here, then all of those initiatives are for naught. Under inclusion, creating an environment that accommodates, includes, and celebrates all members of the WKU community. Eliminate barriers, identify and eliminate those barriers, policies, procedures, things that we do intentionally, unintentionally, that prohibit folks from being successful here. And then the last objective, proactively include all members of the WKU community in institutional actions and initiatives. Again, target one year, 25% diversity in leadership, increasing that in 10 years, increasing that by 50%. Just as the other groups have indicated, this information is posted on the DEI strategic planning portion of the website. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, the, the one about unconscious bias was... Oh, I know. Might be a little unfair because maybe it's more of an academic philosophical question that needs to be asked here. But Is it a rhetorical question? That way we don't have to answer. No, no, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but one about unconscious bias, which of course I found particularly interesting. But I wonder if maybe, and you talked about that being very ambitious, I would argue ambitious to the point of um Impossible? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to say it, so I'm glad you did. And I wonder if maybe it's enough to get people to behave properly, even if you can't get them to think properly. And maybe it's just, I mean, the, the even, even I mean, implicit bias training is, is, you know, that's sort of, it's very much in its infancy. We don't even know how well it works. So can we just focus on people's behavior maybe and not so much? Um, well, definitely that was part of the plan was behavior that those zero tolerance those zero tolerance policies and stuff like that. But you know, we were told to have big ideas with this. So with our big idea, it's like if you can do training, if you can get people, because I think a lot of people really have the heart. It's just connecting the head and the heart to know what you're saying is, is a biased thing that you're saying. So you may make a remark and not realize that that's a racist remark or not know that that's a homophobic remark and being able to do some training and let people know that those two things go together. So that's kind of where we were coming from with that. And we were also dreaming big, you know, so. There's also this notion of the epistemolo um, epistemology of ignorance, <laughs> which is a mouthful. But when, when we begin to think about, think about that, when we choose to work a, on a college campus, there's a set of assumptions that we should assume for ourselves. And that is that we will cultivate a sense of learning, a, a desire to think about who we are as individuals and how we have been socialized to think about ourselves and others in a particular way. And so that being the case, we don't have the language as we look at implicit or unconscious bias and those things. We haven't developed a language for that yet. However, just entering it into, into the room helps people begin to think about this sometimes for the very first time. And 
move away from those, uh, that epistemology of, of ignorance to a different kind of way of knowing. And truly, when I think about so much of DEI, it is about us learning how it is that we have learned about ourselves and then perhaps developing or mastering a different way of, of how we continue to, uh, to, to live in that particular space and think about it, think about it differently, which is going to be really challenging. But nevertheless, we're going to be ambitious because that's who we are as an institution. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we'll keep moving while you guys keep thinking of more questions. All right, you're back. I'm back. I'm Kelly Madole. My co chair, Dave Tatman, couldn't be here today, so I'll try and address these big questions. Um, we did not quite do a SOAR analysis, but we talked about our, the issue of research scholarship and creative endeavors in terms of strengths, challenges, and aspirations. Um, we talked about this as a committee, kind of trying to encompass the university as a whole. And uh, we also solicited from department chairs and heads for their particular unit, um, what are their strengths and challenges and aspirations. There was a lot of uniformity in this. I'm not gonna go over it in detail. Um, and we, we did get some good input on the strengths and challenges. I will say in terms of op aspirations, I think our aspirations were not always very aspirational. And I think actually a lot of the, the unit's aspirations really became um, more strategies. We need to fix this or we need to fix that. Um, and so uh, we actually do have quite a lot of strategies, a lot more than I've got here, because so many, we got so many good, so much good input on strategies, things that we can do differently going forward. So I will say that, um, what I have here is a very trimmed down uh, um, part of what we have been working on as a committee as a whole. Um, our goals uh, were really goals we had from pretty early on in the process. We really tried to think, um, why do we engage in research, scholarship, and creative activities? And we decided there's three main sort of reasons why we do this, things that we hope that we're producing. Um, one is that we advance our students' personal and professional development. Uh, that we raise the scholarly profile of the university and that we improve quality of life in our region. So um, everything sort of assumed, subsumed under those goals. Um, in terms of objectives, again, I had to pare this down from a lot of what we've been talking about on the committee. Um, in terms of students' personal and professional development, uh, sort of overarching objectives to in, in expand student access to uh, research, uh, scholarship, and creative endeavors and therefore also to increase the faculty mentoring of those activities. Um, most of these strategies here are focused on undergraduates, but that is, we have not focused exclusively on, on undergraduates. We've been bringing in the issue of graduate students as well. Um, in terms of raising the scholarly profile of the university, we did focus a bit more on graduate students here. These are sort of mostly engaging more of the higher level research activities there. Um, recognizing that if we're gonna increase faculty involvement and mentoring of students, um, there have to be workload adjustments. The biggest challenge probably overall across units was faculty don't have time to do this. They're spending too much time on other things. We've gotta have a massive reorganization the way we think about what we're doing here if this is truly something we wanna do. Um, and of course, we need more money <laughs> to do that. Uh, more money to, for the research mission, more money for things like graduate student assistantships. Um, and then finally, and this is one where Dave's really been involved, is, um, and he has surveyed uh, business leaders in the community and um, to get their input on what needs to be done. And one thing I don't have on here explicitly, um, but, but is, is sort of addressed by objective number one, is to improve collaboration between community agencies and business agencies and the university. One of the big issues is is lack of easy access into the community and to faculty and student expertise by people in the community, whether that's community agencies or, or business partners. And that is something that he has been focused on a lot with sort of a subgroup. So that was pretty quick, um, and I would be happy to take any questions.
Thank you. Well, um, I would appreciate any input or feedback that you have through the website would be, or just directly to me, would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Here we go. You bet. <clears throat> Hi folks, my name is Jerry today. My co-chair Martha Sales is actually participating over this Zoom thing. Uh, she's actually at a conference right now. Um, the Student Success and Experience Working Group, has, I think, has had a really positive experience trying to identify what student success is and what, what the student experience represents. And it's actually been fun, challenging, exciting. We had our difficulties, I think, like a lot of the groups had. Um, like everyone else has presented, we did a SOAR analysis. I guess I'd like to focus mainly on our aspirations and the measurable results at the bottom part of the table for a second. Um, we believe that every WKU student, every student admitted to WKU will succeed. They'll graduate, we'll help them find their path, we'll help them find their way. By admitting them, we say we believe in you. And no more excuses. Um, only if they had higher ACT scores, only if they had a higher high school GPA. If we admit them, we make a commitment to their success at this institution. We want to make student success the center of the university and make it the center of everything that we do. We believe we really need to create and promote a student identity. There's too much siloing, there's too much division on this campus. We have honor students, we have forensic students, we have athletes, we've got international students. No, we have WKU students. And we need to identify what it means to be a WKU student and promote it. Um, we need to build a sense of belonging among students, faculty, and staff and we need to ingrain professional and transferable skills within our students so that they can be lifelong learners and live better fulfilling lives. Um, we need to, we, for in terms of measurable results, we're gonna see this with increased retention and graduation for all students and pace placement and paid employment upon graduation for all, stu all students. And notice I keep saying all students. It's undergraduates and graduates, no more divisions. We're gonna look at the student's experience holistically. Um, Whoops, I jumped ahead a lot there. Hold on. One important disclaimer that, and I've already kind of reiterated that, I've already said this, let me reiterate it again, is that all of our goals and objectives apply to everyone on campus. They apply to faculty, they apply to staff, they apply to alumni, they apply to students, they apply to everyone. So basically what we're saying is, as a working group, we want all hands on deck. People who work in academic affairs, student affairs, IT, finance, public affairs, enrollment management, athletics, internationalization, internationalization, board of regents, alumni, parents, loved ones, everyone has a responsibility to promote student success on this campus. Student success has to be who we are as an institution. It's everyone's job and it has to apply to all of the students that we make a commitment to when we admit them. Our overarching goal, I guess this could be our vision as a working group, is that we want to ensure that students are the center of an inclusive, supportive, and personalized learning environment that prepares them to lead successful, productive, and fulfilling lives. So we might be using some different terminology as the other working groups. I guess this could be our vision. Right here I'm talking about it as an overarching goal. And our two objectives, we only have two. We, we, we've talked about lots of things. We've kind of narrowed it down to two central objectives. The first one is make student retention and degree completion the center of our institutional culture and structure and to prepare all students for academic success, professional competency, and lifelong learning. We've got some strategies to promote each of these objectives. I'll let you take a look at them on your own and, and won't read them to you. I'll highlight, some of the, I'll, I'll highlight some of the key themes in these. We think we have to make student success centralized, break down the silos, put them in one organizational structure. We should articulate student success in every job description at the institution. If the a job doesn't tie to student success, it shouldn't exist. Every job position, even if you work in IT and you're responsible for the banner system or the Blackboard system, that job description should talk about how that job helps students be successful at this institution. We should use student success as a metric for tenure and promotion for faculty and in, for our annual review for faculty and the annual review for staff. I'm a faculty member in the sociology department. I don't know what that looks like. Is student success talked about in each of the three sections of tenure and promotion or is it a separate section altogether? That's something that the faculty senate's gonna have to come up with, but we believe this is important. Establish and clearly articulate the total cost of attendance. No more surprises. Students know what it costs for a four-year degree at this institution and we're gonna require all students to complete an academic plan, a financial plan, and a professional plan before they complete their second semester at WKU. 
So when students come here, they're being purposeful and intentional about why they're here and what they want to do. This is what I want to study. This is what I want to do when I'm done. And this is how I'm going to pay for it. These targets are provided by CPE. Um, they are the performance-based funding uh, metrics. These were given to us just before Christmas and we were to told to align our strategies to these targets. So we, did, we looked at these targets after we came up with our uh, strategies. For objective two, preparing all students for academic success, professional competency, and lifelong learning, we're repeating strategy five here. Require all students to complete that academic, financial, and professional plan. We believe that ties into this objective as well. We also believe that all students should complete one high impact practice per academic year at the institution. And that could include a first year experience for all first year students to try and promote that sense of what the WKU student identity represents, as well as living learning communities. We want to embed professional competencies like intercultural competence, personal and social responsibility, and inquiry into an, an analysis into every single course, every single academic program, into student affairs programming, and into work study employment. Embed those competencies. We live them. We breathe them. We show our students how to do them. And then establish personal and professional linkage, linkages between university students and alumni and make parents and family partners in the success of their loved ones. We hide behind FERPA too much. There's things that parents can help us with in helping their young people be successful. We need to work with them. And from what we've heard in our committee, alumni want to help also. So we got to find a way to better engage alumni, not just in giving money to the institution, but into mentoring the current students that we have. Those are some targets. And these are the awesome people who helped us develop this. Is there any questions I can answer? Okay, we have a comment uh, direct to you about, is this me? Well, it says on every WQ campus, not just the Bowling Green campus. So, I, so the very question is, is reflecting the problem of this institution. There shouldn't be a Bowling Green campus and Elizabethtown campus and a Glasgow campus. That's what's hurting this institution and preventing it from moving forward. We have to look at every student as one of our students. And you know, the students will tell you that their identities are based on, I'm honors, or I'm athletics, or I'm international. No, you're a WKU student, we need to fix that. So yes, applies to everybody. Kelly. Okay, continuation is, any consideration being given to the creation and implementation of senior year experience as well? So we've talked a little bit about that. We think there's a lot of opportunity to let departments sort of dictate what that senior experience would look like through a capstone, an internship. That would be like a high impact practice, but nothing at the institutional level. Could you talk about more what you mean by an academic plan? Because I've worked with many students who got themselves into a major or something because that's what their parents wanted to do or they thought they'd, that's what they wanted to do in high school and then they felt like they couldn't change. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I've already written down this major on a piece of paper and it would be really hard to change. So how do we keep things, how do we keep this, these plans from uh, creating an atmosphere where students feel very um, constrained in what they can do? It's a great question. So how, based on the conversations we've had, the, the spirit of this idea is that Students are intentional about what they major in, and we're not saying with an academic plan is that students pick a major in the second semester that they're here. It's they pick sort of like a meta major. I'm interested in something related in the sciences or health or social sciences, something that's gonna guide them towards further exploration. It doesn't mean that they can't change their mind, but we don't wanna take 10 or $11,000 in tuition from these students every year and let them wander. We want them to be purposive and intentional. So if you're a freshman, first year student, and you know, I'm interested in health, you're gonna take some health related classes, you're gonna take some general education classes, and you're gonna do some thinking in that first year about how this relates to some profession. And you're gonna work with an academic advisor, you're gonna work with a professional advisor, you're gonna work with people in financial aid to help you think about how you're gonna pay for it, and you're gonna work with career, the Career Center to help you think about what kind of jobs are available. We stole this idea from other institutions. Other institutions are doing this with their first year students. It's called an electronic personal development plan. And basically it, it helps students reflect on 
the classes they're taking, what they might do with them, and how am I going to pay for it when I graduate? This is to hopefully get us around a junior or senior who says, well, I'm about to graduate and I don't know what I want to do. And the professional plan isn't I, wanted, I don't want to do X, I'm going to do specific X. It could just be something as, you know, I, I want to do something related to community development. I want to do something related to sales, something broad, but it's to help them make sure they're taking the right classes, the right time to help them graduate. It's not to pigeonhole them into one major. Thank you. Else? Thanks. See how good all these guys are? They did that in 40 minutes. So it's amazing. <clears throat> um, I should take this opportunity to thank not only all the co chairs, but all the people. Can you just raise your hand if you served on any committee at all during this process? If you're here, just let people around see. So we had, we had very good participation uh, across all the units and uh, in talking with the co-chairs a lot. Uh, I think they were very pleased with the inputs by their committee members and felt for the most part that good representation was occurring across the different units uh, on all of our campuses, so uh, all of WKU. So I think that, you know, we really appreciate all the work that they've done um, and certainly couldn't do it without them. But we also welcome your input on this um, by, again, contacting the co-chairs directly, as well as uh, Paul and myself, or going online if you want to be more anonymous and sending input via email. Um, there's also been student involvement, the, not only the, through uh, our student representatives on all the communities, but some independent student activities uh, going out and collecting data, and they're going to provide us with some more feedback in the next week or so. So we hope that we've been um, good at going from the ground up. This is supposed to be a ground up process, not a top down process. And what comes out of it is something that we should all feel ownership of and also feel responsibility if it doesn't turn out the way we want it to turn out. Um, we should not be finger pointing on this one. This is ours. And the president is extremely sold on that. He is not dictating. He is not filtering, he is not trimming things, he is wide open um, and really working with us extremely well. So don't, don't give up this opportunity because it's gonna be ours. And I think the other thing, we know we're all realists, we know there's dark clouds out there, we know we're not always hearing the news that we wanna hear um, financially, but this is a 10 year plan. This isn't, you know, this isn't uh, the next six months or something like this. This really is the bright shining light that's gonna take us to the future, that's gonna allow us WKU to come through any financial hardships that we're gonna experience in the short term and be a better and brighter institution in the long run. And that's only gonna happen if we all get together and work on it. So, you know, please take that responsibility seriously. Um, it really is a golden opportunity and I think there is that uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and that's where we're headed. So I'm happy to take any questions now. Um, happy to let you go early. Um, you know, I, you're not supposed to do that in classes, but you know, we'll get our 15 weeks in some other time. But uh, anything from the audience, anybody else? Comments, questions? Addy keeps moving, come on up. <clears throat> anybody else? You know how, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, do I have to say my name again? Addie Cheney, International Programs. Uh, so this may be something you addressed earlier, and, and I was too busy looking for a pen and a piece of paper, uh, but the external relations and alumni engagement is something that uh, we weren't able to discuss today. I am curious, though, given the challenges we're facing with the sort of public perception of higher education in the state, um, the, the, the need to maybe reframe that and advocate uh, for a different perspective on the value of higher education and the worthwhile investment that it is. Additionally, sort of on the other end of things, where things stand with P through 12, um, you know, it's, it, we're, students are coming to us with a certain set of skills that they're developing both at home and in high school and, 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 in, um, and then their earlier education. So, you know, how much of the, has that been a part of the conversation and that part of the strategic planning process? Okay. Uh, can I break that into two parts? Yeah. Brandy, do you want to say anything? <clears throat> I was remiss in that. trying to skip over. Come on up and take the mic. Um, 
Mr. Randy Schumacher is one of the co-chairs of the external group. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'll go to the, the second part of that question relative to P through 12, and we have not, uh, our committee has not dealt with the external relations from a P through 12 perspective, um, and I really don't know where that would fall. Um, our overarching goal is to really catalyze use that term because we're in the science building here again, catalyze the success of WKU's strategy through uh, the organizations that we have promoting philanthropy. But we have in our work expanded philanthropy to uh, be well beyond uh, uh, the traditional sense. We're talking about service, mentoring, um, as well as financial support. And we're also talking about expanding the audience that we're approaching um, because philanthropy and service back to the organization, to the university, really is key all the way from a student uh, experience through young alumni, through experienced alumni, through uh, business. So we're trying to expand um, the focus of our external relations to touch all forms of um, uh, of students and those who have had that experience at WKU. So um, it's, uh, we really have five planks, uh, but one of the planks which uh, has not been part of our mission, we haven't taken it as our mission, is to do an educational component with our students, with our alumni, with our graduates, with our philanthropy community about why giving back and becoming an ongoing part of this university is critical to the success and advancement of the university. So that's a bit about what we're doing. We're in a bit of a cat and mouse game because we're here to catalyze the support of the university as it relates to strategy. And most of the strategy is still being developed. So we're, we feel like we're trailing this experience a little bit. We've talked a little bit about P through 12 and particularly student preparedness. And this kind of goes back to what one of the things Jerry said about admitting students that can be successful here. One of the things we've talked about is identifying schools who produce students that are successful here. Um, let's look at the data and then recruit at those schools. Um, so that's one way. It's not really a PR kind of thing like you were talking about, but we have been thinking about the students out there before they get to us. Thanks. I'll follow up on that in a second, but let me handle this one. Okay. To what extent, if any, are community members and employers being included in the process? Anybody want to, Randy, do you want to say anything more about that? Well, uh, the, the committee, uh, me being one of one of the folks, uh, represents part of the business community. The other co-chair, Mike Simpson, Simpson, is also uh, part of the community. We have not done any, done any broad solicitation, but we really rely on uh, our representatives from foundations, John Paul Blair and Donald Smith, who are constantly in contact with donors and businesses in the community to be getting that feedback uh, from the community uh, and input to our process. Kelly, you want to say something about Dave, maybe? So Dave Tatman is a co-chair on this committee, and I don't know his exact title. <laughs> um, maybe somebody, he, he, he works with, the, he's sort of a liaison to the business community and the university. Uh, we also have Ron Bunch, who is head of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and Jeff Hook, who's with the Center for Research and Development, um, who have really been very valuable in bringing that perspective on. It's been really um, useful and a good learning experience. Just as a, a follow-up a little bit on the um, financial side and the external committee, we, we made a sort of a deal, I guess, about halfway through in around the December forum and stuff that it seemed most efficient rather than for that committee to start to create a whole lot of plans that might not support where everybody else wanted to go 
um, and put those people through that kind of time. And, and you'll see a little bit of that, and correct me if I'm wrong, budget folks, you'll see a little bit of that in the budget side of, of the budget infrastructure committee in which they're going to support the platforms that come out of the strategic plan in a performance-based way and stuff. So rather than just say, you know, we're gonna go raise money to climb to Mount Kilimanjaro, because I work in Tanzania, sorry. You know, but we're not actually going to go to Mount Kilimanjaro. It's kind of senseless to raise money to do that, right? So, so the idea is for them to kind of bring up the rear just a little bit and see where the other committees are formulating the plan and then put together an external strategic plan from that committee for how they're going to go about doing that. So we, we made that purposeful. That's not an omission. Um, and we thought it was the most efficient way to go. Anything else? Well, tomorrow at four, we have another one of these. Um, and please, if people couldn't come today and you know that and can talk about it up to other folks, we're down, down the hill tomorrow. So thank you very much for coming and uh, have a great afternoon. Thanks. Bye.